Have you ever wondered why Europe doesn't build skyscrapers? Well, here's why. Despite being one of the most developed, densely populated, and economically prosperous continents, Europe has surprisingly few skyscrapers, particularly when compared to North America and Asia. Of the 218 skyscrapers constructed to date, 66% of them are located in just five cities, London, Paris, Frankfurt, Moscow, and Istanbul. When skyscrapers first rode into prominence in the 19th century, first in Chicago and later in New York, many Europeans were firmly established with grand historic buildings and public spaces that left little space for new structures. Most of the European cities around that time were more evenly zoned and were not facing the high demand for floor space in key districts that typically drive high-rise development. Yet, even the city of Honolulu on the island of Hawaii has more skyscrapers than London. Europe just doesn't like to build skyscrapers. Now, for the major cities in Asia, Shanghai, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, and Tokyo while many other cities have similar skylines in urban planning. The major cities in the Middle East are Dubai, Doha, Kuwait, and others have forests of skyscrapers. Interestingly, if we go to Europe compared with major Asian, Middle Eastern, and North American cities, the western part of Europe is incomparable to these skyscraper-focused cities. Historically, most European cities were founded in the Middle Ages, some of them thousands of years ago. The churches were the highest and most important buildings, signifying the heritage and culture. The scale of skyscrapers would often strongly influence and disturb the perception of historic cities because they dominate the skyline and overall view of the cities. In 1940, even the fascist government of Italy was worried that bombings and invasion could destroy Italy's churches and monuments. So they started to reinforce building walls around them. This is how Santa Croce Church in Liege was fortified. Not only churches are important in Europe, but also a lot of other historical buildings. Also, they are often a subtle relationship to each other and the landscape of hills and lakes. Many people in European cities live in houses and apartments older than in the United States of America. So London and Paris have fairly strict laws on the height of the buildings to protect the city's aesthetics. For example, London has no less than 50,000 protected buildings and counting. Rising each year was automatic age listing. The impact constructing a tall building next to them would have on the locality would easily ignite the local not-in-my-backyard movement. Additionally, here in London, you have something called a protected view. There are 14 protected views including the need to see St. Paul's Cathedral from as far away as Alexandra Palace. Other protected views focus on the Palace of Westminster, Buckingham, and more. London is traversed by no less than 14 huge viewing corridors to famous viewpoints, often to see these five UNESCO World Heritage Sites, five cathedrals, six palaces, and three castles. The result is that there is a complex three-dimensional grid above central London, for which architects must not build. But the architects of the financial skyscrapers in the City of London have risen to the challenge and come up with some impressive workarounds. The leading hall building has a distinctive cheese grater shape which allows it to lean out of the way of one of the protected views. The UK has a policy for metropolitan areas called a Green Belt. The Green Belt is intended to prevent urban sprawl and protect towns and villages from merging and losing their identity. As the population grows, more and more people get crammed into a small place. Rent prices will go through the roof, and on average middle-class families, apartments get tinier and tinier. Eventually, it will become a little. So this is one of the reasons why London has the most expensive rental accommodation in Europe, followed by Zurich, Moscow, and Geneva. According to the Accommodation Ranking Report by ECA International, the only way for London is to go up to build skyscrapers this way. Nice and spacious apartments become affordable. So keeping the visual impression of London and the view of its cultural sites has a massive downside for Londoners. In Paris, there are even stricter laws. All towers are banned within the city, allowing features like the Eiffel Tower and less invalids to stand out in the cityscape. The area of La Défense, outside the Paris city limits, is the location of Paris's financial district and has its fair share of skyscrapers. But it's considered far enough away not to ruin the view of Paris. London has something similar to a secondary financial district in the Canary Wharf area. But unlike London, the government of France has allowed urban sprawl around the city, and rent prices are relatively lower than in London. Why do Europeans hate skyscrapers? Now let's look at why Europeans hate skyscrapers, even though it makes life much easier. This disdain for skyscrapers in Europeans began in the 1960s when Brussels was hosting Expo. Expo is a huge event, so the Belgian government demolished huge blocks of historical buildings to give land for skyscrapers to be built. 
disregarding historical sites and buildings and this has been termed as Brussels realization. This label doesn't solely apply to Brussels. Rather, it can denote any place where uncontrolled growth emerged from a lack of zoning regulations and a laissez-faire approach to urban development. For example, New York City stands on firm granite, which doesn't let the city sink. But in Berlin, the entire city is built on the muddy ground up to 80 meters deep. All high-rise buildings are floating vessels. Carving through the muddy ground and building the foundation first is a very expensive challenge urban sprawl is much cheaper for Berlin. At this point, you might think about Shanghai, built on muddy ground but filled with skyscrapers of four decades, Shanghai has been sinking, and currently, 30% of its subsidence can be attributed to skyscrapers. China decided to go ahead anyway because the primary justification for it in Shanghai could be that the population density is such that land prices skyrocket and make it attractive to build, overcoming planning objections. Zoning regulations are advertised as something good, preserving the culture, heritage, and jazz. But often, it goes down to cronyism. There are the cronies who benefit from zoning regulations and lobby for them. If skyscrapers are allowed, far more apartments and office spaces will be available, pushing down the rent costs. Because there is more supply, it will depress the value of the existing properties. What do you think? Should Europeans go ahead with skyscrapers to lower the runs, or should it stay as it is? Are you European? What is your personal opinion about skyscrapers in your city? Let me know your suggestions in the comments section below and of course subscribe to help us unlock the community tab at 500 subscribers. Thank you for your support.